anyways, thanks everybody for coming out here this morning. I know it's early and there's a beach behind me and that's way more fun, but thanks for being in here. I'm here to talk about Aurelia, which is uh, this week's JavaScript framework. So, <laughs> so anyways, let's, uh, let's get started. Now, first off, who am I? Because nobody knows who I am. My name is Ashley Grant. I, uh, I'm an Aurelia core team member, and I've been doing ASP.NET development for about 10 years, which really got me ready for modern JavaScript. And, uh, but the nice thing to know is that I'm just as much of a noob as anybody in here. Anybody who's never done any Angular or Ember or anything, don't feel intimidated. Come last November, I was right there with you. I went to uh, Dev Intersection and got really, really excited about doing Angular development. I live in Tallahassee, Florida, which, uh, which is where Rob Eisenberg is. And at the time, he was on the Angular uh, team for Angular 2. And I was like, man, this is awesome. This, it, Angular stuff's going to be great. I'll be able to learn everything. If I have any questions, I know where to go. I, you know, I just drive down the street and ask him a question. I got back from that uh, conference on a Saturday, and the next Tuesday, he put out a blog post saying he was leaving the team. And I'm just like, <laughs> shit. You know? And uh, so I, I started talking to him, and he said, well, why don't you come join our team? And the first thing I said was, no, I, I don't know anything about this. He said, you'd be fine. So anyways, that should make you really confident in me. <laughs> so all right, where are we going to go today? I'm going to tell you a little about the what and the why. You know, What is Aurelia? Why did we create it? Uh, I'll show you a nice little sample app, get that started so you can get a feel for what it's like developing in Aurelia. And we're going to move on and look at our current status and some of our next steps, where we're moving over the next couple of months, OK? All right, so what is Aurelia? First off, Aurelia is it's just JavaScript. Now, it's modern ECMAScript 6 and 7 JavaScript. We're out there on the, the, leading, uh, the bleeding edge, if you will. But we have JavaScript, and we've used the module system that's built into ECMAScript 6 to create a, a framework that is a bunch of small collaborating libraries. And the nice thing about that is even if you don't want to write an Aurelia app, maybe you just use Node.js on, on a day-to-day -day basis, and you've been saying, man, my, my dependency injection system that I'm using is crap. Well, you can, you can pull ours in. You know, Aurelia doesn't run on Node.js, but our, our dependency injection system works there, and it's great. You know. Aurelia is used to build JavaScript clients. You know, we've heard them called spas, modern applications. But that doesn't just mean the browser. You know, nowadays, you can build using JavaScript on the desktop using something like Electron. You can build for mobile devices using something, uh, what is it called, Apache Cordova. And uh, you know, the, the cool thing is, you know, anywhere that web technology is, which is pretty much everywhere these days, that's where you're going to be wanting to use Aurelia, because it's just so easy. Next, let's talk about the philosophy. You know, how do we think about Aurelia, and how do we want you, as a developer, to think about using Aurelia? Key to Aurelia is that we're open source. We're MIT licensed, which is a very open license. You, know, you can kind of do whatever you want with it. And that should make you feel comfortable that, you know, as a, as a core team, we're not going to take Aurelia and like, take it closed source and charge you money for it. You know, Aurelia will, will always be free. Another key component of Aurelia is clean code. And, and our, our framework code, it's really clean. You can go in and look at our code. It's on GitHub. And, uh, and until we do our performance enhancements, it's going to be nice and clean. It might get a little ugly there necessarily, but more important to you guys here, because you guys don't write frameworks, more important to you is that your code, when you use Aurelia, is going to be clean. It's not going to be cluttered up with a bunch of you know, boilerplate code that you have to annotate everything with just to make it work. By default, you can, a lot of your stuff is just going to be plain old ECMAScript 6 with no Aurelia to be seen. And you'll see that in the demo I do in a few minutes. We follow simple conventions, OK? Now, you know, over the years, we've all built applications, and, and you know, the patterns emerge and everything. And you want your framework to understand these patterns. And again, going back to the boilerplate, you don't want to have to write a bunch of boilerplate. You want the, the framework to just know what to do. But at the same time, Sometimes you want to override those conventions. 
So Aurelia gives you, out of the box, we give you a bunch of simple conventions to use, and if you use those, your life's gonna be great. But if those conventions don't work for you, you can override them and, and say, listen, Aurelia, this is how we're gonna do things today, and you're gonna like it. Aurelia is testable, both the framework and your code. Uh, who's written JavaScript unit test? A lot of you. What about end-to-end -end testing? Okay. Well, with Aurelia, because we have clean code and it's simple code and there's not a lot of framework code in your code, the code you write is going to be imminently testable, both, both unit testing and end-to-end -end testing. So that's, that is really nice. And out of the box, our uh, demo app that we ship will give you the setup and show you how to do all of that stuff if you're not familiar with it. Uh, we use Jasmine and Karma out of the box as well as uh, Protractor for end-to-end. -end. But again, that's just what we decided to ship. We had to make a choice. You're not tied to it if you don't like that. Now, Aurelia as a framework, we're experiencing very rapid adoption. You know, we've got 4,000 stars for our framework repo on GitHub. Uh, anybody use Gitter? for chat, for public or open source stuff? Yeah, well, our Gitter channel has over 1,700 users, which is, we like to brag about this, it's, it's bigger than the other frameworks. We got more people. You know, there's, there's people there around the world. 24 hours a day, you have a question, you can come into our Gitter channel and someone, whether a core team member or a community member is gonna be able to help you figure it out. And in terms of core team members, we've got core team members around the world. Here in the US, in Europe, uh, I think we have one in Thailand. So hopefully there'll be a core team member in there to help you uh, with that stuff. Um, we've got big and small companies already writing applications using Aurelia. We're not allowed to say the names of them yet, but soon enough you'll see. You know, there's big names out there. But some of these companies out there, and even individual developers, they, they want, they need to have, you know, the security blanket of commercial support. And so with Aurelia, we decided to create a company called Durandal Inc. to back up the framework. Uh, with Aurelia, or sorry, with Durandal Inc., what we're gonna be providing is stuff like commercial support and an ecosystem around the framework. And I know that's gonna scare some of you, but don't worry. The framework itself is always going to be free. It will, you'll never have to pay a penny to use Aurelia. So why did we create Aurelia? You know, everybody says there's a new JavaScript framework created you know, every day practically. So why, why? Why did we do this? Well, the web's changing. Just about a month and a half ago, we had ECMAScript 6 come out. Uh, Ex the ES7, sorry, 2015 and 2016, those are coming out, uh, 2016 will be next year. The modern DOM, it's coalescing to where, you know, the, the APIs and everything are, are consistent across browsers. We don't have to use jQuery. No jQuery, I'm sorry. I mean, you can use it if you want. And then, <laughs> and then uh, you know, we've got web components. The web component standard is coming along. And, and things are changing, they're changing quickly, and we wanted to build a framework with all of that new technology. So when we started out with this, you know, we wanted something with no external dependencies. That way we're not forced to wait. You know, if there's a bug in something, we're not forced to wait for it, and you're not forced to wait for it. You know, we can keep iterating on the framework. But we do have polyfills, you know, stuff like object.observe and a couple other things where not all of the browsers support these things yet. We polyfill it and get, it, get your browser up and running with it. But the nice thing about that, where our only external dependency is polyfills, is that over time the browsers are going to start supporting these things and the polyfills will drop off. And so over time the framework is going to get smaller and it's going to get even faster. Now, we wanted to create, as I said earlier, a simple and yet powerful programming model. Now, I said simple, not simplistic. You, when we go look at our, uh, our templating and binding code, you'll see what I mean. It's a really easy syntax to work with, but you can just see just how powerful this can be. You know? So, simple, not simplistic. And oh, and the other thing, our learning curve isn't meme worthy. We've all seen the, the chart that, like that. You're not gonna have that problem with Aurelia. So now, we wanted to add modern, future compatible two-way data binding. A lot of people over the past couple of years have used frameworks that have two-way data binding. 
but they have a, you know, a digest cycle, dirty checking. And that's not really that performant. You can, you can iterate it on it and iterate on it, but it's never going to be that performant. But the browsers are coming along. ES2016 is going to have the object.observe spec, so observable JavaScript objects. We have a polyfill for that, and we use that nowadays. And the only time you have to have dirty checking on your code is when you have uh, composite properties and stuff, but we even provide a way for you to tell the framework, listen, this one, this property depends on these other properties, and then the framework's like, all right, cool, no more dirty checking for you, you're good to go. And so we wanted, you know, it's, it's fast, you don't have to worry about it, you know, slowing you down. And we wanted to provide commercial support. As I said, a lot of people, they want commercial support, and so we wanted to be there for those people so that they can pick up a phone and ask a question. But again, you'll never have to pay to use Aurelia. And we wanted to provide, and this is probably most important, we wanted to provide a pathway forward for Durandal and Angular users. Uh, Durandal is Rob Eisenberg's previous web framework. I don't know, has anybody used Durandal? All right, no, good, good, a couple people. Well, you can think of Aurelia as the spiritual successor to Durandal, and we're gonna be providing a lot of ways to help you migrate your code forward. Uh, keep watching our blog over the next couple of months to see some of the stuff we're going to be doing in that area. We've got some really cool things coming in, you know. And then also Angular developers. If you're not happy with what you're seeing in the next generation of Angular stuff, come check out what we have. Maybe you'll like it. All right, so that's enough talk. Probably boring all of you. Let's, let's build an app. Now, we are in public preview, and so, you know, one of the hardest parts of building an Aurelia app right now is actually getting up and starting. But everything you need to know to get started playing with Aurelia is on this slide, okay? If you do the steps on this slide, you can start playing with Aurelia and you're good to go. So first, go out to our GitHub and download our skeleton navigation application. This is our starter kit. It's designed to be production quality and yet give you uh, some examples of how our binding and templating engine work. Uh, get that unzip it, you'll have to have Node.js. Now, Aurelia does not depend on Node.js, but our build tools do. We use Gulp and Babel and stuff, and those depend on Node.js. It's, it's, it's pretty standard nowadays for modern JavaScript development to have Node.js in your workflow. You're gonna install Gulp and JSPM. You'll notice here, if I, oh, right there, you'll notice that we've got the at beta on JSPM. JSPM uh, version, uh, 0 0.15, as it moves to 0 0.16, is undergoing some pretty major changes to update updates for the system module loader spec. And to stay ahead of the curve, we just this week updated our skeleton project. And so right now, it depends on the beta. Hopefully, in the next week or two, you won't need to say at beta on there. But anyways, you install Gulp, the task runner. JSPM is our client-side package manager. You have NPM for... Uh, server side, you know, development time packages. JSPM is a modern standards based client side package manager. It gives you, uh, it, it understands stuff like system modules, which is the new ES6 module format, but it also understands AMD, Common JS, and even global modules. Uh, it does a lot of the stuff for you and just makes, makes workflow easy. You don't have to use this. If you want to use something like Webpack, you can do that. But as again, we had to make a decision of what we were going to ship. And so we went with JSPM. Next, um, from your command line, you're going to run npm install, which will pull in all of the tooling that Gulp needs to build your application and a nice little uh, Node.js server for you to work with as you're uh, actually doing development. It provides something like something called browser sync, which as you save files, it'll automatically reload your application in the browser. Uh, and then run JSPM install. This is where you actually get the framework. JSPM will go out to GitHub and pull in the framework. In the skeleton application, it'll also pull in Bootstrap and Fawn Awesome and stuff. That's just, you know, we didn't want our skeleton to look ugly, so we, we went with that. And then to get started, you just type gulp watch. Boom, you're up and running. All right, so let's go to the code. Let's see here. All right, so everybody can see that? 
Now, up here at the top, you'll see we've got some, we're pulling in, we pull in Bootstrap and Fawn Awesome. We have some custom styles. That's all just to make everything look good. It's not a requirement of the framework. So anyways, I'm gonna go ahead and minimize that, get it out of the way. And let's look at what we've got here. Now, to start out, we have two script tags. First, we pull in System.js. Now, the system module loader is standard, it's the ES6 standard for how to do uh, load modules in your browser, starting with ES6. And we use that. JSPM ships with the polyfill for it. The cool thing with the system module spec, or the system loader spec, is that it's out, out of the box, it's designed to be extensible. And so uh, JSPM's polyfill that it ships with has a bunch of extensions for, for loading things like CSS and, and HTML and stuff. And so we utilize those things. But anyways, you pull that in. Next, you pull in config.js. Config.js is JSPM's configuration file. Uh, if you've ever used, say, uh, CommonJS or AMD, you've had to build the shim and all of that stuff. Uh, JSPM does all of that stuff for you most of the time, and it stores a lot of the information for that in the config so that it knows how to, how to do its thing. So you, you do those two things, and then next we call system.import. System.import is the standards-based way in ES6 to dynamically load JavaScript modules. So we dynamically load the Aurelia bootstrapper. The Aurelia bootstrapper, as you might expect, is how we get the framework started. It goes out, configures the framework based on what you've said to do, and starts up, the, starts up your application. Okay, any questions so far? No? All right. So, one thing to realize is this index.html file here, chances are your index.html file, whenever you write an, an Aurelia application, no matter how complex it gets, this is pretty much going to be your index.html file. This is, this, is, this is good enough, you know. We've got some new things coming down the path uh, where you can uh, have static HTML and then enhance it. But if you want to write just a, a plain Aurelia app, this is pretty much how it's going to always look. All right, so let's start writing some Aurelia code. Now, what happens with the bootstrapper is first it goes, I forgot about this, it goes and it, See this Aurelia app attribute on the body tag? The bootstrapper is going to go and find that. It's going to find an HTML element that has the Aurelia app attribute. And that is where it's going to insert your application into the DOM. Okay? By convention, after it finds that, it's going to go out and look for an app.js and an app.html file uh, to put in there. So let's go ahead and create those. So first, I'll create an app.js, and into here, I'm going to insert some code. Now, what you see here is an ECMAScript 6 class. All right, technically, it's an ECMAScript 7 class because we have uh, class-level properties up here at the top, but just go with me. It's ES6. We have three properties on here. We have a computed property called full name that is utilizing the ES6 string interpolation feature, which is the dollar sign and curly braces. It's probably my favorite feature of ES6. Uh, classes are nice, but string interpolation is awesome. So anyways, we use that, and then we have a nice little method down here that will show an alert with your full name. It's a very simple class. The thing to notice here there's no Aurelia here. You're, you're not, we're not importing anything from Aurelia or anything. This is just plain old ES6. So let's render this. Let's show a view file. So we'll have app.html. Now, this is how a simple Aurelia template is going to look. First off, at the top, you'll see that we have a template element. All of your Aurelia templates are going to have a template element. This is the standards-based way from the web component spec to create HTML templates. So you'll just remember to always wrap your code, your view code, in a template. Next, you'll see here on line three, we've got the heading. And I talked about string interpolation in ES6, and so this should look familiar, dollar sign curly brace. One of the, the key tenets of our templating engine is we wanted to bring ECMAScript 6 
ideas into the view so that there wasn't a context switch between how, does, how do I write code for my view and how do I write code for my view model. And so we've done that here. You see string interpolation is up there. Hopefully, hopefully you like that. Next, let's go down to line eight and you'll see that we have a text box. It's a simple text box, but you'll see that we do value.bind, not just value. So value.bind. Dot bind is how you get the default binding in Aurelia. By default, pretty much all elements are going to be a one-way data binding, except for stuff like form elements where it makes sense to have two-way data binding. So when you have dot bind and then you say equals a property name, that's going to bind it to the first name property on our view model. Now, that's nice, but maybe you want to override this or you want to be explicit. You know, maybe I want to be explicit that this text box is going to be two-way data bound. And here's where one of the really cool things with Aurelia's templating and uh, binding language comes in, which is to be explicit and say you want two-way, instead of saying value.bind, just say value.2-way. Do what you say, you know, what do I want to do? Okay, how do I do it? Uh, just say what I want, right there. Now, Okay, that's great, but what if you want to override that and make it a one-way data binding for whatever reason? Well, I'm sure you guys are ahead of me on this one. But there you go. It's one way. It's that simple. Now, out of the box, Aurelia provides three different binding directions. We give you one-way, two-way, and one-time. Any guesses on how you override it to make it a one-time data binding? Yeah. See, Aurelia is simple. There you go. What is bind? Bind gives you the default direction. It's going to be a sensible default, which means that for a form element, text boxes, text areas, check boxes, it's going to be two-way. But it's, say you're uh, binding um, on a div or something, that's going to be one-way. So one-way from the view model into the view. We're trying to help provide the best <laughs> performance we can out of the box. because. Two-way data binding is necessarily going to be slower than one-way data binding. So we give you that. But I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to take this back and just do the default. And you see we have another text box here. It does the same thing, binds to last name. And then down here on line 16, you'll see we're using the string interpolation to bind to that computed property. Now, that's good. We, we're binding to properties and everything. But how do we do eventing? Well. Up here on line five, you'll see that we have submit.trigger for this form, and then we have, uh, we're calling the submit method with parentheses. Now, we have two event bindings. We have trigger and delegate. I would say by default, try to always use delegate, because the difference between these two is delegate uses event delegation, event bubbling, so you'll have one event handler on your page, while trigger will attach an event handler to that element. There are certain cases where you'll want to use trigger, but by default, try to use delegate and use trigger. Just, OK, I have to use trigger here. For whatever reason, I need to use it. And as to answer the question, well, what are those reasons? You'll see them when you encounter them, you know? And uh, yeah. So anyways, I'm going to switch this over to dot delegate. Now, hopefully you're seeing the pattern in Aurelia, which is something dot something for our binding. Anytime you see in, in the HTML view, anytime you see something dot something, you can figure that's Aurelia is going gonna, is gonna to look at that and have something to do with that. Okay? So you'll see we ship a lot of binding behaviors out of the box, but you can add in your own. And our docs show you how to do that. But uh, it doesn't have to just be simply binding something. You know, uh, Maybe you want, we have a repeater that also works on this thing. And I'll show that in a minute. All right, well, anyways. Let's go ahead and see how this works when we run it. All right, so as I said, to get things up and running, type gulp watch. And it's going to build out this ES6, transpile it down to ES5, and create a uh, Node.js server with browser sync on it. So there it goes. All right, so it's starting up serve. Now, with our skeleton application, you are going to get Localhost 9000 is where you're going to go. It tells you right there. So I'm going to go over to Chrome. Go to localhost 9000. There we go. 
So as you can see, you got the heading is bound. We got Cecil's first and last name up there. Cecil's uh, thing, yeah. So let's, now remember, this is two-way data bound. So I'm gonna change it to my name. So as you see, as I type, it's getting updated. That should be familiar for anybody who's used you know, Angular and stuff. It's, it's really familiar. The key here is that great simple binding syntax. you know, And then our event binding works as well. I click Submit and it says, welcome, Ashley Grant. Simple enough, right? Now, but maybe it's too simple. We just have one page in this application. That's, that's not very exciting. So let's go ahead. Next, I'm going to add in a router, a client-side router, so that we can start doing some navigation within our application. So to do that, I'm going to come over here. And first, what I'm going to do is I'm going to rename these two files that I've already created. I'm going to rename them. OK, that was the wrong thing. Let's rename to welcome.html and welcome.js. Another pattern in Aurelia is your view and view model match up. The file names match up, just different extensions. OK, so here we have, this is now our welcome module. And it has welcome.html as its view. That's the convention. It is possible to override that. It's pretty easy to override that if you need to. But out of the box, this is how it works. So I just got rid of our app HTML and JS. So I'm going to go ahead and recreate those. So in here, now this is the first time that you're going to see code that is Arela, Arela e if you will. Um, but at the same time, there is no, we're not importing anything from the framework or anything still. What you have here is a class called app and then a method called configure router. And as you might expect, this is how you configure your router. So what happens is when Aurelia goes and looks at your app class, it'll say, do you have a configure router method? OK, I'll go ahead and I'll call that for you. Now remember, before, our, uh, in welcome.js, we didn't have a configure router. So Aurelia didn't find one. I was like, OK, fine. That's fine. I'll just let you do your thing. But now we do. So Aurelia is going to call that. And it's going to pass us a configuration object and the router itself. So we go ahead and we configure it up. We only have one router, or sorry, only one route right now, which is our welcome module. So we're matching on the empty string and on welcome. Okay. What our router does is it will uh, provide you with like history state tracking to sync up to the browser and everything, as well as mapping any of the, the URL snippets inside of the URL, helping you map that. It's, all run on the client side, and you can actually even have child routers and stuff. If you, if you download our skeleton application, you'll see it using child routers, and you can start to see, even with the, the crazy little sample it does, you can start to see just how powerful this can be. Because you can have, inside of a view, you can have a view that has its own router and everything, and it can get really fun. So we, wrap, we map that one route. We call it welcome, and then we pass it. Let's scroll over here. It won't let me. So we pass it a module ID. We tell that that is going to be in welcome. In the, so dot slash welcome. So that tells it, OK, I need to look for welcome.js and welcome.html. And then we tell it that this is a navigable route. And we tell it what the name is. And you'll see why those two things are important in just a minute. Any questions on that? No? OK. So we have an app.js. Let's go ahead and create an app.html. And I'm using snippets because I'm really bad at writing code live, so I'd be screwing all of this up. So anyways, again, this is your second HTML template in Aurelia. And you'll see we have the template tag again. That is, and I even screwed up the templates. There we go. All right. So we have a nav bar here. Anybody who's used Bootstrap will recognize this code. I'm going to come back to this in just a minute to show you something that's a little bit more important. So down here, we've got a tag you may not have seen, because it's, a, a, it's not a standard HTML tag, which is router view. Now, router view is a custom element provided by the Aurelia framework. And it is the spot in your template where the router is going to insert 
whatever module that it's rendering, okay? So with this, uh, what's gonna happen is the router will go out and say, okay, I've matched this route, now I mean, where do I put it? Oh, right here, it just puts it there. But the nice thing is you can wrap other HTML around the router view tag, as you've seen here. So let's go back to this nav bar, which is gonna be really hard to see on this tiny little screen, but you'll see here, we have, we're using string interpolation again, and so router.title, and you'll remember that we set the title here to Aurelia, and I'll just, I'll change it to code on the beach, okay? So you'll see that. And then down here, I talked about a repeater. Well, this is our repeater here, here on line 18. And remember I said that with Aurelia's templating language, we wanted to give you take things from ES6 and put them into your templating so that you didn't have to context switch. Well, in ES6, we have a new type of uh, loop, which is the for of loop. It allows you to loop over a bunch of new types of uh, collections and iterables and everything. Well, we decided to use that syntax here. So you say repeat dot for, there's that something dot something I was talking about. So repeat dot for row of router dot navigation. Now in our Configure router method, we didn't set up a navigation property. So what is that? Well, you remember the nav true property that is way over here? Yeah, nav true. What the router will do is any of the routes that have the nav true property set, it's going to put those into the navigation property. And as you might expect, the reason it does that is to make your life easy so that you can build you know, a, a nav bar or something like that. So we iterate over that, and then we do some cool things, things you haven't seen yet. Now, this here is a list item, Woo. but we are binding inside of its class property. We have string interpolation bound to the is active property of that route. And what we're doing, this is a ternary operator, we just say, if it is active, put in a class called active. If not, just an empty string. Now, I think that's a pretty nice, terse, simple syntax for, for doing this. And you can think of just how easy this would be. Because you're not tied to just having that. You know, you can have your class list in here, you know, class foo. And it will put in active there, but keep the rest of what you've already put in there. You know, or you can do multiple of these inside of any HTML attribute that you want, whether it's a custom attribute that you've created using Aurelia or it's a standard attribute like class. Pretty cool? All right. Now then, next we have a link. This is a nav bar, so we got to give you a way to link. So we're binding to the uh, href of the row and putting in the, the title. Pretty simple stuff. And then down here, we have another new type of binding for you, which is our if binding. In pretty much any application you create, sometimes you want to hide and show stuff. Well, in HTML and in Aurelia, we've given you two different ways, because you can either just set you know, display none on the, the CSS for a thing, or you can just rip it out of the DOM. And so with Aurelia, we give you both of those options out of the box. We have the if binding, which will add and remove items from the DOM depending on the, the truthiness of what they're bound to. And then we have the show dot bind, show will just set display none on them. And again, here, you can say, if you wanted to make this a one-time data binding, you say if dot one time. It's all coming together here, okay? And what this is gonna show, or, or what it's gonna place in the DOM or take out is a, a, a fun, awesome spinner. And we'll, we'll see that here in a few minutes. All right, so we've got our router configured, and browser sync is helping us out. By, re, uh, by updating everything for us. So here we go. You see that I added code on the beach as the router's title, it's up there, and we've got one route. We get the welcome route. And I can click on it, and it'll take us there. So nice. And also you'll notice here that we've got now, what was our whole application, that welcome page, is now just a view inside of that router view, okay? Stick with me on that one. now. So we got a router, but we only have one route. That's, that's useless, right? So let's go ahead and we will add in a second route. So I will first come over here 
and attempt to copy this. I'm going to call this other route, I'm going to call it uh, GitHub users. So that's the title that you'll see. I'll tell it the module is users, the name is users, and then over here. Now, as I'm typing this, it, it may look like, you know, well, what if I want to have query string parameters or dynamic, dynamic routes or something? You can do all of that, but in this demo, I'm just using simple routes. Go check out our documentation to get a better idea of how to do those things. Um, the router's not just demoware, so. All right, and so we're gonna, mount, uh, we're gonna match on users in the URL, okay? So first, let me show you. I added the route, so now it says GitHub user up here. But if I click on it, it's, it's not gonna go anywhere. So I, wanna, I told it the module name is gonna be users. So let's go ahead and by convention, I'm gonna have users.html, users.js. All right. So, this is, you know, this is the first time you're actually seeing us pull in code from the framework to help out with writing something. Here on, uh, we import inject, which is how you talk to our dependency injection system. And we're importing our HTTP client, which is actually a fetch client. Has anybody used the new um, fetch protocol or whatever it is, you know, making fetch happen? Uh, and then we, we import fetch, which is, it's a global thing. We're just importing it so the browser knows to use it. In this case, it's because we're, we're loading a polyfill for it because it's only implemented, I think, in Chrome right now. So this is the ECMAScript 6 way to, Im to statically import modules, okay? So up there on the line one, we import inject. What is inject? It's how you tell Aurelia's dependency injection system what to inject into your class. So you call inject here, you'll see the at sign. That's an ES7 decorator. That's a feature that's coming next year, but Babel supports it today, so we go ahead and we use it. And it, you tell it, I wanna import HTTP client. What you can do is you can pass it as many things as you want, just comma separated. They're just parameters to inject. And it will inject those into the class via the constructor. So as you see here, we got on line five, we have inject HTTP client, and then on line 10, we're actually saying here, this is what I want you to pass it in as, HTTP. So we do that, we configure our router, we give it a base URL and everything, and then we set it as a property on our class. Everybody following with that? Pretty simple. And then the fun begins because we take it and we call out to GitHub's API, say give us your users, and we have a promise returned. We take that, we get the JSON out of it. And then we have another promise where we're gonna set inside that promise, we're setting it on our user's property of the class. Now, notice that we're returning a promise in this activate method. What is activate, by the way? Activate is part of the router's lifecycle. And again, you remember we saw the configure router method previously, where Aurelia just sees it, and if, it, if it's there, it'll call it. Well, the router, it checks, and if you have an activate method, it'll call it. And this allows you to do stuff before the view is actually uh, loaded into the DOM. And uh, so in this case, we're loading up users, all right? And we're loading, or we're returning a promise from it. Our router lifecycle is fully async aware and promise aware, okay? So what it does here is it'll wait, since you're returning a promise, it'll wait for that promise to finish executing before it actually shows the page, okay? If you don't want that, if you just wanna have it show the page and then wait for things to load while it's being displayed, you don't return the promise. It'll just, okay, I'm done, you know? But anyways, here we are returning the promise and so it'll wait for GitHub to come back with the users and for us to set it to that property before it actually displays the view. All right, so that's users.js. We will add in users.html. Now, at this point, this template should be pretty boring. We've got a repeater, we, we have string interpolation, um, nothing really crazy at this point. We're just, 
we get back that list of users and we're showing you a bunch of them. So let's go look at what it looks like. Any questions though? Yes? The, um, the this that you were using yes. Okay, yeah, the question was the this.http in our JavaScript file, why I have to use this? Because what happens is the constructor gets passed in a variable called HTTP, or a parameter called HTTP, but for us to continue using that outside the constructor, we have to set it to a property on the class. And so we set it this.http equals HTTP, okay? And so now it's a class property. So then down here, we have to say this.http. And I, I kind of get what you're asking, which is why can't I just say HTTP because it's a property on the class. That's how ES6 works. It requires it. Um, I constantly, because I, I do C-sharp code a lot, I constantly forget that, and then Babel yells at me. Um, so yeah, you have to do it because that's how the language works. <laughs> so, All right, so let's go look at what we've got. So if I click on GitHub users, and our web is working, yay. You see here, it just loaded up a list of users, and these are the top, like the earliest users at GitHub. But anyways, now you're seeing how we're, we're actually using ex, utilizing external resources and calling in to parts of the framework and everything to do things. So you're kind of starting to get a feel for how a, you know, a real Aurelia application is gonna work. Now, another question you might have you know, I said that we, we, it's a framework, we provide you things, but maybe you have your own HTTP client that you want to use, or you have a service that you've already built that you want to plug in and use that. You're not required to use our HTTP client or our fetch client, but we, we ship that for you so that, you know, you can use it if you want it. Um, so, yeah. All right. So, we have, as I said, over here, we've got a bunch of GitHub users. But... This is a demo, and if there's one thing I've always seen done in demos, it's, it's let's, let's do stupid coding tricks, because it, it's a demo, and who cares? I, I'm not getting paid for this. All right, so I'm going to show you that. First, what I'm going to do is over here in app.html, and, and honestly, this isn't really a stupid coding trick, but, you know, I'm looking at my, my nav bar, and I'm thinking, that really doesn't belong here. I should, I should refactor this code out into its own separate file. So I'm going to do that. And I'm, you're going to start to see how view composition works in Aurelia. So I'm just going to take this whole nav, and I'm just going to cut it out, and I'm going to create a file called nav.html. And I'll paste that in there, save it. That's all I'm doing. I didn't, well, actually, I will make one change. You got to have a template tag. So I'll add that in. Down here, I'll close it. All right, so all I did was take that out, put it inside a template tag in a separate file. Now then, yeah, nope, nope, not that. I'm going to say view equals dot slash nav. So here I'm using a compose element, which is another custom element provided by the Aurelia framework. And what it gives you is the ability to do dynamic composition of views. This is probably the most powerful thing you can do with Aurelia, is start dynamically and statically composing your views. Um, this, as you start playing with the compose element, You'll see like you can have, okay, I've got this one uh, view model, but I want to dynamically change which view HTML I'm using. And so you can do view.bind and have a property on your main view model. And as that property changes, and it's just a, it's just a module ID, the view that's being rendered in for this, inside this compose is, is changing. And think about how awesome that can be. Like you have a whole set of li a list of, a collection of things, and you want to, you know, one thing is going to look one way, but another thing is going to look another way, and it's all depending on certain properties and everything. And you can start to get an idea for how powerful this can be. All right. Well, let's go ahead. And if we come back over here, did I save all of that? I did. Okay. 
and I broke it. As I said, I try not to do custom coding on live, but we will check and see what happened. Oh. Couldn't find it. Normally you wouldn't do that. There it goes. But anyways, now it's working. So what we've got here, as you can see, without changing any of the code other than adding that template tag, I've got, I've, I have refactored out my nav bar. So it's in a separate file. It's not cluttering up my main app HTML. And if we go in and we do look at it in the HTML, which is going to be difficult on this tiny of a screen, and I understand if nobody can see that, but <laughs> if I make it any bigger, we won't be able to see it anyways. But what I'm going to show you is right here where my mouse is, you'll see that compose element right there. And then Aurelia is inserting everything into that. All right? Yes? Yeah. Uh, templates are all just static HTML files, and so the browser kind of handles a lot of that stuff. But we also have bundling and stuff that you can do. And um, so the answer is yes. Uh, yeah. So I can, after the talk, I can, sorry, the question was uh, talking about caching of these uh, separate views and everything. And yes, the browser will cache them for you. But also, we, we provide a bundling solution to help you out you, uh, built on top of what JSPM does for bundling. All right. So that is cool. But now I said I wanted stupid coding tricks. So let's do some stupid coding tricks. What I'm going to do down here, I'm going to use that compose tag again. And, but this time I've got, you'll see, instead of having view, I've got view model. So what I'm doing here is I'm dynamically composing this module or this view inside itself, okay? I don't know why you'd ever do that, but it's a demo, so let's do it. All right, but the problem with this is if you think about it, this is gonna infinitely go and eventually the browser explode and that'll make the rest of the, app, the, the demo really hard. So what I'm gonna do is I am going to add in a checkbox, and I am going to bind to the check pro checked property. Um, or wait, no, I'm not. I'll do that down there. But I'm going to create a checkbox, and I'm going to use our uh, ref attribute. And what ref does is it will create a property on your view model that is this element. Okay, not the view model for the element if you have one, if it's a custom element, but the element itself. Okay. So I'm going to say, um, I'm going to call it is recursive. And I'm going to close this tag. And then down here, inside of this composed element, I'm going to do that if binding. So I'm going to say if binding, or if bind is recursive dot checked. OK? So whenever that checkbox is checked, I'll go ahead and I'll insert this uh, stuff into the DOM. So if we come over here. Let me get rid of all of that. You'll see now, and hopefully you can see that just barely on the side of the screen, there's a checkbox. And when I check it, it adds another one. And then it adds another one. Yeah. And that, that's pretty useless. But you, know, you can kind of think of ways you might utilize something like this, like I was talking about with a, a collection of stuff and everything. But let's take this a step further. This is dynamic composition of views. What if you want to do static composition of views? What if you want to have custom elements that you're pulling in? Well, I'm going to show you something really cool that Aurelia can do for you. Custom elements are awesome, but if you've ever played with the straight up web component spec, you, you might understand that creating custom elements is a bit of a pain in the butt. But with Aurelia, it isn't. 
Now, remember this welcome HTML and welcome JS. I have not touched welcome JS since the beginning of the demo. It started out, it was the only page in our application, and then became a view within the router. Well, and now I've added in, I've added it as a view within itself. Well, what I'm going to do now, I am going to take, I'm going to delete all of this, and I'm just going to call, well, I'm going to try to delete it. Come on, little buddy. There we go. Welcome. So I'm going to change the element name from compose to welcome, and you'll see that I also got rid of that view model binding in there. All right. And I'm going to save that. That's all I'm doing here. I created a custom element. You all never saw me create it but or do anything special to create a custom element, but I did. So if we come over here, the page reloaded. You'll notice that all the extra checkboxes I did aren't there anymore. But if we do our checkboxes, it's working. This is really powerful. You know, without changing any of our ES6 code from the beginning of the demo, now we have a custom element. That's pretty cool. Any view that you create in Aurelia is automatically a custom element, and the, the custom element name by convention is the module name. Okay? So in this case, it was welcome.js, welcome.html. So it's a welcome is the, the attribute name. Pretty cool, huh? Yes? So what if you have like, different HTMLs for the same welcome.js? There are various different ways to handle that. The question was, what if you have different welcome or different HTML files for views for welcome.js? The easiest way would be to use the compose binding and um, have a property on the main view model that would be, it would, it would spit out what to use. Uh, which view HTML to use, and so you would do uh, view.bind equals to the property, and then it would dynamically update that for you. Another option is in our documentation, we show you how to use, I think it's a git view strategy that will set that up for you. Can you, write, you can write custom code that will decide all of that. It's in our documentation. Come talk to me after the, the session, and I'll explain it a little better. We are starting to get close to running out of time. All right, so anyways, without touching any code, we created a custom element. That's, that's pretty cool. So let me get back in here. So yeah, without creating any or changing any code, we created a custom element. If you want to add attributes to that custom element and everything, there are, I can, our documentation shows you how to do that. But this is just one of those things that we kind of discovered that the framework could, could do, and we were like, wow, this is awesome. But anyways, no code changes. It's magic. <laughs> Everybody's been doing GIFs this weekend, so I had to add one. All right, so anyways, what is the status of Aurelia and where are we going over the next couple of months? Well, first, we are currently in public preview. That means we're beyond an alpha, but we're not quite a beta, okay? Um, we don't recommend right now that you push to production with stuff, uh, with your Aurelia code, but if you're, if you're brave, you can do it. We're not gonna stop you. Uh, we are fully featured though. You saw in this demo, we talked about custom attributes, or sorry, custom elements, uh, the router, we did navigation, all of that stuff. Everything, you, pretty much everything you'll, uh, you'll ever need to build an Aurelia application is already there. It's just more little esoteric things that we're, we're working on. Um, we have preliminary <laughs> documentation. If you go out to Aurelia.io, there'll be a link that'll take you to it. Uh, it, right now it's pretty simple, but we're, we're going to be working on over the next couple of months to get better documentation out there. We do have real applications in development though. As I talked about, you know, we have large companies and small companies, individual developers, all building applications using Aurelia. You know, you don't have 1,700 people in your Gitter channel and they're all just there talking about who's got the best kind of popcorn or something. Um, whoa, come back. And we have, as I said earlier, rapid adoption in a large active community. And hopefully you guys will join that community. So where are we going next? Well, next we're going to do IE9 support, but we already did that. Originally, yeah, I know that's important for a lot of people. Originally, when we started, we publicly announced Aurelia, we weren't going to support anything but, uh, what is it, Greenfield or whatever, the, the green browser, the evergreen browsers. But the community let us know that, uh, no, you need to support it. And so we looked into it, and it, it wasn't a lot of work, a couple polyfills and everything to support all the way back to IE9. 
Unfortunately, if you need IE8 support, it is not going to happen. We literally can't make that happen. <laughs> so uh, we've got a command line interface coming along, as well as bundling. It says check, but it's, it's, it's in a really early, early beta right now. Um, but anyways, you can go check that out. We have some blog posts on our blog at blog.durandal.io that you can check out that give you an idea of how that all works. We're working on stabilizing our API. For the most part right now, the API that you're going to use for an, a normal Aurelia app is stable. It's just some of the edge cases and everything that we're working on. A lot of these, we call them private APIs right now. They're not actually private. It's just we haven't like put in documentation because we are still tweaking them. Um, but the, I mean, once, once they've finalized, we'll have documentation for them and everything. But right now, just know that you can still build any app you want using Aurelia. We're working right now on performance optimization. The hardest part of optimizing for performance is the benchmarking, because you, you, you say, oh, I know if I do this one thing, it's going to make everything faster. But you got you to gotta show that it's faster. And so we've spent a lot of time working on benchmarking, and now we are working on optimizing our code so that it gets faster and faster. Uh, and, and we're working on rich interactive documentation. Um, just wait. When our full documentation starts to, to trickle out, I think it's really going to make you happy. Just think multimedia experience, you know. Uh, and we've got plugins in development. One thing I didn't get a chance to talk about today is, is animation. Animation can be done via a plugin. If you download our Skeleton app, it has a navigate, uh, sorry, a, an animation plugin uh, out of the box to show you how that works. But there are multiple animation plugins so that you can use your fr favorite animation framework. We also have internationalization and validation frame uh, plugins. Those plugins can work together. The two that I just talked about, they can, they can work together, but you can build your own plugins as well. We have both core team official plugins as well as community developed plugins that are in development or out there already right now. We are pushing towards a beta. The hope is in the next six weeks, hopefully by October, will be at uh, the, the time that we're ready for beta. And when we hit beta, that's where we say, have at it. Go to production. We're good. We're good. All right. So anyways, thank you. And uh, come check out our Gitter channel at uh, gitter.im slash Aurelia slash discuss. Uh, our, fr our framework framework Twitter account is at Aurelia Effect. My Twitter is at Ashley M. Grant. And this conference, they, they didn't really have any way for us to get feedback. And I'm sure it's all bad, so I wanted to give you as many hashtags as you could so that the feedback can be really small. So it's uh, hashtag code on the beach, hashtag Ashley, your presentation was less than good. If you can get anything in after that, I'll take it. Thank you. <laughs>